Ah, anyway, who's next? Next on the list here, Terry Gordy. And hopefully I will be uh, on this one. And I uh, also, as I recall, tried to, or uh, not tried to, did, uh, give them some pictures and some footage and things that, you know, uh, again, another brilliant talent. And who would be in uh, otherworldly today with his talent and ability and natural oomph in his day and the shit that he could do. Um, you know, and, and unfortunately, again, gone too soon. And we, he just as age-wise, chronologically, he would have been in his late 30s when the Attitude Era took off. And, well, he was in his late 30s when the Attitude Era took off. And if he'd have been in his, in his this condition he should have been in chronologically, he could have made a fucking fortune more than the Freebirds did in their whole run in a couple years. And he just, just missed it. And I mean, he still did wonderful in Japan, but you know, to be able to, after all those years, uh, stay home for a couple years and make, who knows, several hundred thousand dollars to whatever a year. Do you still have, cause it was, Obviously edited severely, and even in that form, it was alarming at the time. But after Terry Gordy had the incident where he passed out on the plane, he went into a coma, and he came out of it, he returned to wrestling, he did some stuff in Dallas with Michael Hayes for the GWF, and then you brought him in to the Night of Legends in 94 against Tony Anthony. Yeah. And you had a promo you played on TV, and obviously, like I said, it was clipped. Do you have like the unedited promo of that still? I mean, what did you think uh, when you got that tape? Um, I've got a lot of, you know, work tapes and stuff. I can't tell you off the top of my head if I have that one specific raw footage of, you know, the interview, but it was it was like a science fiction movie in that the voice was basically the same and it was coming out of the same human being, but all of the emotion was gone. And he, it, because of whatever, you know. It was a brain injury that well, it, ended it, up being it, the it, result of the coma and everything. Well, right? yeah. I mean, you know, whatever oxygen was, dep whatever part of the brain, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a brain surgeon. I'm a small town bird lawyer. Whatever part of the brain that would, uh, lack of oxygen or coma or whatever effects, it took his he, I think he was maybe still even the same person inside behind the eyes, but I've mentioned when, if you'd be talking to somebody in a locker room, instead of being Terry Gordy and him just coming, Hey, you know, and ask a question or slap you on the back or whatever, you would notice that out of the corner of your eye, he's just standing there staring and you'd turn around and he'd be letting you say, Oh, Terry, can I help you? Oh yeah, Jim. I was just wondering. And he'd asked a question and then, you know, whatever. And in the ring, he could still run the ropes. He could still do the moves. He didn't hurt anybody, but the life was gone. The personality, the, what made him bam, bam, you know, the. Yeah. You, you just said he could run the ropes still because in Knoxville for the night of legends, again, I was there. The music hit Leonard Skinner Freebird, And he came out and he got in the ring and he started running the ropes, and for a second you thought, oh my God, the old Terry Gordy's here. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even that long a period of time. It had been a year. Oh my God, here he is. And then as soon as the match started, it just wasn't, it wasn't connecting. Not only was it not connecting in the ring, you could tell it wasn't connecting from his brain to his body. He couldn't, he couldn't make it work. Yeah. And uh, we'll see. I mean, obviously a very interesting episode there. When he was... Uh, let's see, 61. when he was 18 years old and Bobby Eaton was 20 years old, they were both working for Nick Goulas and they were probably <laughs> better at that point than half the guys working for Jim Crockett or Vince McMahon. And just nobody knew it yet. And then suddenly Gordy finally gets to here in Memphis, you could see it. more people saw it, but then you got to Louisiana, 
And it's like, here he's a teenager, he's main event in the fucking Superdome. And Bobby took a little bit longer because he didn't have the, <clears throat> honestly, the, the Michael size. Hayes. Of, well, he didn't have the size in the promo and he didn't have the tag team partner, the the mouth, you know. The so, mouth more than a tag team partner because the first yeah. thing Watts did was say, I'm getting this guy out of the ring. <laughs> I'm getting Buddy well, Roberts. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but anyway, but that's, you know, so I'll, I'll look forward to seeing that one on, on Terry. Uh, 